I just got out of bed. As I woke in by the sound of sirens, I just had a terrible feeling something bad is happening. Usually a code three response in my experience. It is almost never someone doing something awful to the police. And almost always the police doing something awful to the people. This looks like one vehicle. So this is probably not even the sirens that I heard. It's probably just a traffic stop. How are you? <laughs> yes, the okay, so the gentleman in, in plain clothes definitely has a gun. The detective for Gardena? And it looked like they took a catalytic converter as well as some intake parts. Aftermarket intakes with look like Canon type of air filters on it. Maybe he'll give me a comment. He sounded friendly, said hello to me. Could be wrong, I hate to accuse somebody of something if that's not what's going on. But they did take a catalytic converter. I don't know if somebody was accused of catalytic converter theft, but I do know that happens. Sometimes people will be climbing under motor vehicles that are not their own and I think like using a sawzall or, or some kind of battery powered saw and they chop the catalytic converter off I think there's a there's a part in there that's made of platinum or something whatever it is um, they sometimes will sell them they sell it for the for the precious metal inside of it if that's what's going on I don't recall what it is that they get for these catalytic converters but I haven't been recording the Gardena police on any kind of a regular basis. Maybe it was 2018. They encrypted their radios, so I can no longer monitor their radio transmissions and, and, and keep track of where they're at or what they're doing. The only way for me to come across them is by coincidence. And like I said, I woke up out of bed and... I, I believe when I, I heard the... Um, Sheriff's responding code three to something. I come out here hoping to see to see where they were going, but instead I seen this Gardena stop. So basically, I'm just sticking around to see if I can get a comment or not. Maybe I'll ask the gentleman his name. Obviously, I've met him before, but it's probably been years since um you know since I've seen and recorded him. The young lady I recognize too, but I don't have any idea what her name is or. Like I said, I haven't recorded these guys in years. So what do you record for? Like just, to like... just, um, just keep eye on the police. Sometimes, you know, sometimes what they're doing is not always right, you know? Yeah. Um, I have a, a channel on um, YouTube. My, my name is Tom Zebra. And uh, that, I just record the police because, especially like the Los Angeles Sheriff Department, a lot of times they're, they're doing shady shit to people. Yeah, okay. So, um, so you're trying to like, just capture it? Yeah, if, I, if I'm there, the, a lot of times the person will be released right away or, or they'll just treat people better than, than if there's nobody keeping an eye on them. Can I ask a question real quick before you go? I was just going to try to get a comment, and th rather than wait uh, forever, it looked like, was that a catalytic converter? Catalytic converter, yeah. So was there a catalytic converter theft going on? Looks like it. That's a uh, U-Haul gear was flagged down, and someone was like, hey, there's someone throwing stuff over here. Okay, so... Off the car coming out, and... Okay, uh, can I ask your name? You're welcome. I, I appreciate it. You have a good That's night. Right. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Ma'am, I don't mean to bother you. I'm, I'm on my way out of here. I was just going to ask your name, if you don't mind.
What's that? Just because that's what I do, you know, I record the police and I ask them. I probably asked you before in the past, I don't recall. Is it okay if I, can you tell me? Thank you, you have a good night. These police should have never been given encryption. It cost them $16 million to encrypt their radios that were working just fine. In fact, they were working far better before they encrypted them because now the police have privacy. They can literally get away with murder. And unless they report it to the news or the media, there's no way for you or I to even find out about it. They appear to be doing their jobs properly tonight. But if and when they choose not to, they'll be committing any crimes they they want in complete privacy. I don't think I could pronounce either one of their names. The, the reason I ask is mostly just to make sure that they are willing to give it. You know, 20 years ago, just asking an officer their names would be enough to cause anybody grief because not only would they not give you their names, they would start threatening you and telling you to step back and whatnot. It might not be completely obvious, but just the act of asking their name and recording them and talking to them, each time you do that, they become a little bit more conditioned, a little bit more responsive, a little bit more friendly. And even uploading those videos, other police watch them in Southern California, here where I record. So they start to learn from each other. So then eventually, when I'm recording these police and asking them their name, they already learned the program just from watching my other videos. But yeah, I don't recognize either of their names, so it may be, I may have never even asked them their names. I'm, I'm not sure about that. It's impossible to keep track, but if and when I make it back to Gardena, I expect them to be even friendlier next time. I was just gonna comment on how I've literally chased the um, sheriff out of Lawndale as I was running through this red light here in front of the sheriff vehicle. Um, let's see where he's headed. Headed out of Lawndale. I could come to Hawthorne Boulevard right here and the, the police stops, they were nonstop. So the Lawndale Sheriff, they now <laughs> patrol surrounding cities where they don't have a contract. At least one or two boulevards out of Lawndale. It's nearly impossible to find the Lawndale Sheriff patrolling Lawndale anymore. This has happened before. Around 2012, the Torrance Police Department Internal Affairs approached me and blew a bunch of smoke up my ass. They're like, Daniel, why don't you, look, we understand you're upset about the way you were treated and about the way your girlfriend was treated. They're like, why don't you come in and file a complaint, give us a chance to try to remedy but you know, these problems before you have your mind made up that we're all no good. I would ride Western between my house and my dad's house. Maybe it was nine or 10 miles. I would catch the police every time. They would be searching cars, searching people on bicycles. They're always searching something. And in the city of Torrance especially, their searches would last like 45 minutes to an hour. That's a long time for an innocent person to be locked in the back of a car. So. I agreed and I sat down with internal affairs to file these complaints. You know, at the time, I just was answering their questions, but it was all centered around where do I ride? I basically explained to them that all these videos that I've made, all these traffic stops, all these searches that I call illegal, they're all on Western between Artesia and Sepulveda. I recorded probably hundreds, but there was five or six things that I had an issue with, five or six incidents. You guys are just gonna send me the response to each one of these complaints. Were the officers gonna be exonerated or my complaints unfounded? If you guys just send me a response to, to each of these a year from now, saying you've done nothing wrong, I'm gonna be pissed if you guys just bullshitted me, wasted my time to ask me questions about where do I ride my bike? Where do I, how do I find you guys? How do I record these videos? And that's exactly what happened. For years after that, I was unable to find the Torrance Police on Western searching people. And maybe that's the maybe that's the point. Mission accomplished. But I suspect they just moved their shenanigans to some other place or a different time of the day. But now we've had the same thing with the Lawndale Sheriff Department. 
me and Ricky and Laura chased them off of Century Boulevard, off of Imperial. Haven't been able to find them there now for years. Or if we can find them, it's just once in a great while where previously we could just go there and record them all night long. So then Jody Cat got involved, stepped up our game a bit. She was good at getting a comment from every single person that we recorded. She would inquire. And look, this Londell Sheriff, like I said, what is he doing? He's sitting in a parking lot outside of Londell. Why would a Londell Sheriff come over and sit in a parking lot outside of a city? Look, and he's gonna run away. Where are you going, partner? I just have a question. I just have a question, it's real simple. There's no reason to be scared, right? Excuse me, deputy. See that? See how these, why in the f would a Londell Sheriff be scared of a guy on a bicycle? Explain that to me. If you're not doing nothing wrong, you should have nothing to hide, right? He's going even further from Lawndale. Look, where the f is he going? Lawndale is behind us. These police don't make those kind of decisions on their own. They're not smart enough or they don't care enough. I, I can't, maybe I can't exactly pinpoint it, but they will do a thousand stupid things, unlawful stops in front of me. It's not until they're instructed, which they have been. They've been instructed to not let me and my associates catch them up anymore. As far as I'm concerned, I just did. What the f are you doing over here in Redondo Beach if you're a Lawndale Sheriff? He is close by. If there's a radio call, he can respond in a matter of seconds. He'll be back in Lawndale. It's very telling that these sheriff deputies will not even patrol their own city anymore just because a guy on a bicycle is riding around with a cell phone. Me and my associates have smashed it. We killed it out here. If anyone in the, you know, in this country wants to know how to keep your police in check, it's as simple as talking to them. It's not that simple. <laughs> okay, I had to go through hell. And it's probably only a miracle that I come out on the other side. I was just trying to prove a point to you guys real quick. I'm sure they were, you know, crying to their um, union attorneys. It's not fair that they are being subjected to being on the internet and all their crimes being exposed to the public. They rotated all the, all the cops that we busted in the Christopher Bailey lawsuit. If you don't hear anything else I'm saying, hear this. They were not disciplined. None of these guys have been disciplined in any way for anything they did, including trying to murder innocent Christopher Bailey. That young man was innocent. He was 37 years old, no criminal record, on his way home from work. Innocent does not get any more innocent than Christopher Bailey. And they were murdering the guy. They treated me like I'm the criminal for being a, a bystander with a cell phone. They owe somebody an apology. Laura, me, you're not law enforcement, Mr. Salmon, are you? I don't know, Miss Weiss, who's been out here on the street enforcing the law for 20 years? Was it you? Was it the deputies? They were out here breaking the law. You're goddamn right I've been out here enforcing the law. You think that the, the sheriff department runs away from me just because of my bad breath? I'm about to publish some videos that are going to make Benjamin Crump smile from ear to ear. He's going to set some new records for the largest settlements ever paid out to individual victims of police violence.